Have you ever wondered about why we need bread dough and how to do it well and how long to knead bread dough? Then this video is for you. Hi guys, my name is Susie and I recently started learning how to make my own bread. I ran into a few challenges recently and I almost gave up baking. But then I started reading more about the science of bread making and I decided to share what I've learned so far in a series called Knowledge Sharing. This video will have timestamps so you can skip to a section you're interested in. As a disclaimer, this is what I found from research and experimenting. If there's anything I see that you disagree with, leave a comment below and let's have a discussion. I'm hoping to learn from you guys as well. I'll have all of my references in the description box below. All right, let's get started. Kneading is the next step after combining all of your ingredients and it's also one of the most crucial steps in bread making. How well and how long you knead your dough will determine the final results of your bread. One of the key ingredients in bread making is yeast. And when you proof the dough, the yeast grows and multiplies and produces carbon dioxide, which needs to be trapped in the dough. And this can only happen if the dough was kneaded adequately. The flour we use in making bread has protein, and some have more protein than others. All-purpose flour has the least amount of protein, while wheat and bread flour have the most. When you knead bread dough, you're aligning and cross-linking the gluten or protein in the flour to create a gluten network. This question, in my opinion, doesn't have a straight answer. But most pundits say when your dough is stretchy and it doesn't easily break when pulled, then you can stop kneading. There's also a window test, which is stretching the dough so you can see through it. But I don't know if it's just me, but I don't always get stretchy dough immediately after kneading my dough. What I usually do is I let it rest for about a minute after kneading and then form it into a ball. If the top of the ball is fairly smooth without the dough tearing, then I know that my dough is ready for proofing. There are three factors that affect the strength of the gluten network. The flour, water or hydration content, and how long you knead the dough. If you use flour with high protein content, like bread or wheat flour, more gluten will be developed, which will make the gluten structure stronger. If your recipe calls for a lot of liquids or water, this will help the gluten align easily, strengthening the gluten network. And the longer you need, the stronger your gluten structure, but up to a certain point. The recipe usually tells you how long to knead the dough for. There are several methods of kneading dough. You can use your hands or you can use equipment like a sand mixer, food processor, or a bread machine. Kneading by hand is one of the most basic ways and also the most tedious. When kneading by hand, gently fold and press the dough away from you using the heel of your hand. Repeat until the dough is smooth and comes together. This can be very time consuming and strenuous if kneading a large batch of dough. So I recommend either splitting the batch or just making smaller batches. One of the most common ways is using a sand mixer. After you combine all of your ingredients, start the mixer and it does all the work for you. You might have to stop the mixer to push the dough away from the sides depending on the model you use or the size of the dough. Some mixers also walk on the countertop, so you wanna make sure that you're keeping an eye on it. Food processors are also great for kneading dough. Just make sure you use ice water since a lot of friction is created when kneading, which heats up the dough. Also try to work in small batches. You can also knead the dough using a bread machine. Just combine all of the ingredients and it'll do all the work of you, including baking the bread with just one push of a button. The final step is checking if your dough is in a desired temperature range, which is between 75 to 78 degrees F. This is the ideal temperature for the yeast to do what it needs to do. I'll link the video up here for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more baking videos from me. If there are any more questions you have, please leave them in the comment section below. And I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.